This is an example of a student who is visually impaired and has been integrated into a regular education third grade classroom. Decisions about the particular educational needs of individual students are made after assessment, which is an ongoing process that can change as a student grows and develops. Assessment is done by the teacher of the visually impaired to establish the need for vision services. The functional vision assessment looks at how the student uses their remaining vision in the classroom and what environmental adaptations need to be made to take advantage of that vision. The learning media assessment helps the team to decide what the learning and literacy media should be for a student with a visual impairment. It recommends such things as braille, large print, and various technology. These two assessments drive the need for accommodations and specially designed instruction. The IEP is then written by the educational team and addresses the recommendations. This is meant to be an example of a program that meets the unique needs of a particular student who has low vision and uses both print and braille. You will see examples of the use of technology in the classroom, the importance of consultation and collaboration between team members in providing meaningful instruction, and the classroom support that helps to make this student successful. Every situation is different, but what's happening here is um, comprised of a team that includes a few members. The classroom teacher obviously is involved in uh, designing the curriculum and teaching the general education curriculum. There is a Braillist slash instructional assistant and she is certified as a Braillist so that she's able to adapt all the materials that the student needs. They probably should be actual tactile yeah. manipulatives. That she also is available for support in the classroom. She does checkups with her regularly to follow with her braille reading skills and she will support her in during math so that she has the tools that she needs and the pictures that she needs as they're happening. And then there is me, I'm the teacher of the visually impaired. My role is to assess, make recommendations, support the classroom teacher, collaborate, and I provide specially designed instruction in the areas that are designated on the IEP. Keyword menu, create a document. How about first off, you show me how to get to the office from here. The orientation and mobility instructor comes regularly to do lessons with the student, to learn how to orient in the school, also off-site, so they will go off uh, campus occasionally and generally orient her to the community. And you made it. Yep, we did. Okay. The rest of the team includes the principal and the people on site, and it's a very supportive situation here. It's, it's an ideal situation for a student to thrive. We could cross-check if we don't know to make sure it makes sense and all that. Good job. Makes sense. Does it sound right? And does it look right? It's really important for the team to get together and to collaborate. We're fortunate that we're able to meet regularly and talk about what's going on and discuss strategies to make things work better within the classroom and also how to adapt particular materials that are coming up that might be uh, more of a challenge. And so that's a really important part of the program for this student. This is a video magnifier and it is a wonderful tool. It helps the student to be able to look at things at distance. So right now it's focused on a chart that the teacher was using. She can also then move the camera to look at um, students as they're answering questions, get the teacher's face on and understand expressions. And she can also turn the camera down and use it to focus on things that are near, like um, work that she has. So this has been a really uh, important tool to just open up the curriculum for this student. At this station, we have a computer with a large monitor. And on the computer is loaded uh, speech output software as well as um, magnification software. So the student can totally access 
the computer here. We placed it here in the front of the classroom so that she could be part of the circle time with the rest of the students and be able to connect during those discussion times. And I have to put the apostrophe. And in addition to that, this monitor has a connection to the teacher's smart board and document camera. So the student can look at and get a very close, near, and pretty clear picture to follow along with. This is a smart board. It's an interactive whiteboard. You can write on it and it takes anything they have on the computer and projects it into there. We can use it for math, for reading, all those different areas. I can write on the board. We can solve different problems. And so it helps to be able to highlight different things to direct the kids, the students' attentions to whatever I'm pointing out or whatever we're working on. The document camera I've used in lots of different ways. Using the document camera helps the kids, the students see everything. It really in particular helps the visual impaired student because when I had her before and she'd have to be close, she'd actually have to put her head near and that was um, awkward and also created a barrier for her. When we put it up on the document camera, she can see it up close herself onto her monitor. She doesn't have to be positioned in a certain place. She's able to learn wherever is the best spot for her. We try to organize the classroom to make it easy for the student to find the things that they need in a timely manner and to make some choices about what they're going to do. And so we have this shelf set up and her book choices are here and the manual braille writer that she's been using sits here so she knows where to find it all the time. And she has a new tool, a new braille writer called a braille note that she has just uh, begun to learn to use. Everybody's reading quietly by themselves, enjoying your books. I hope you have some good stuff in your book baskets. This is our good time to get into our books. When they have free reading, students get to choose where to read, so we've allowed this student to also make those kind of choices. So sometimes she may be reading on the floor because that's her choice. Sometimes we'll move the braille writer right next to her monitor so that she has access to it. It might not be the best position for braille writing, but it's available and it keeps her close with the classroom. Two important points need to be made. This is only one scenario. Each child is different, and therefore, each child's program is different and should be tailored to his or her unique needs and classroom environment. Finding what is right for each individual is a process. Second, our goal is always independence, but this can only be achieved through adequate instruction and support. We strive to ensure that each student has the skills, the tools, and the experience to achieve this goal of independence.